Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Bluebubbles, a message forwarding software from macOS to Android. Bluebubbles has a couple advantages over AirMessage, which I showed off in my previous video. This video will be a continuation of the previous video, so instead of setting up AirMessage, you can set up Bluebubbles. Bluebubbles has a couple extra features such as Private API, which I'll be showing in this video. Private API allows you to enable extra features like inline replies and sending reactions and more features that a normal iPhone would have. We'll start by first downloading the server from the GitHub. Download the latest version and make sure you download the .dmg file and not the .zip file. Once it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and download MacForge, which is part of the private API setup. You can skip this step if you don't plan on setting it up, although I highly recommend it since it allows you to use more features. Once you go to the private API page, scroll down until you find the version for your macOS. So we're using macOS Monterey, which is macOS 12. If you're using a virtual machine like I am, make sure you choose the Intel version. Then click MacForge and then download the link. Once you've downloaded both apps, go ahead and open the .dmg file for Bluebubbles and add it to the Applications folder. Do the same for MacForge. Once you have both apps in the Applications folder, go ahead and launch Bluebubbles. You'll be greeted with this pop-up that says Open System Preferences. Bluebubbles needs some permissions from the Privacy tab to allow it to access the iMessage database. Go ahead and scroll down until you find Full Disk Access and then click the lock to unlock it. Once it's unlocked, go ahead and click on Bluebubbles and then go to the Accessibility tab on the left. Then click Bluebubbles again. Once it's done, you can go ahead and lock it and then close this window. Then relaunch Bluebubbles. Then you might get a pop-up to access your contacts. Click OK so you can have contacts on the web browser. On the second page, you can see that the macOS permissions both have passed because we just enabled them. Then click Next. You'll see this tab for Firebase configurations. We're going to go ahead and start that on a different computer. On the website guide for Bluebubbles, you'll see a Firebase link. Here, go ahead and click Create a Project, and then enter a name. This can be anything, but I would recommend just naming it Bluebubbles. Once you have created it, click on the Build tab on the left and then click Real-Time Database. From here, click Create Database and then select your region. Here, click Start in Lock Mode and Enable. On this page, just go ahead and click the Project Settings and then go to the Cloud the Service Accounts tab. Here, click Service Account. Then click Generate New Key and then save that somewhere where you can access later. Then go to the Cloud Messaging tab. From here, if the Cloud Messaging API is disabled, click Manage API and then open a new tab. Here, go ahead and accept the terms and conditions and then click Enable. Once it's enabled, we can go ahead and close this tab. Then reload this page to make sure that it has been enabled properly. If it says a green check mark and enabled, we can go ahead and click the general tab. And at the bottom of the page, click the Android symbol. Here, name your app whatever you'd like, com dot your username or name and then dot blue bubbles. 
then click register app and then download the Google services JSON file and then save it where you can access it later. Once you're done, put both those files on a USB drive and then put the USB in the Mac machine. Now that we have access to both of it on the USB drive, transfer it to your downloads folder somewhere accessible on the Mac. I just moved both of the JSON files to the downloads folder on the Mac. Once they're transferred, go ahead and relaunch the Bluebubbles app. Now we can continue the setup. Keep clicking next until we get back to the same page where we need to drag and drop the JSON files. Here we can go ahead and just drag it from the downloads folder onto the Bluebubbles window. Once it's successfully loaded for both of them, go ahead and click the next tab. Now we need to go ahead and set up a server password. This will allow us to connect securely to our server through the Android app. You might get a pop-up that says once access system events, go ahead and click OK. This allows Bluebubbles to read the messages. Then go ahead and click save and then make sure your proxy server is down set to Cloudflare. With the completion of that step, the basic setup is done. You can go ahead and skip the step if you don't plan on setting up private API, but I do recommend it. So follow along if you do want the extra features. Go ahead and search private API on Google and then head back to this page. I'll have a link for this in the description. Scroll down until you get to the Instructions tab. From here, make sure you choose macOS 11 or based on your macOS version. Copy the code and then paste it in the terminal. Enter your password when prompted and then you can go ahead and return back to the Instructions. Now we need to disable the system integrity protection. It's different for each Mac. If you have a Apple Silicon or Intel Mac, follow the instructions above. If you have a virtual machine like I'm running, go ahead and follow the video. From this page, copy this command, then paste it in the terminal. Once that's done, go ahead and shut down your Mac. We need to make some changes to the VMX file, similarly to how we did in the previous video when setting up iMessage. Once you're shut down, go ahead and open the VMX file in Notepad. Scroll to the bottom and type setup once equal to true. Make sure the code looks exactly how it's on screen. Once that's done, save it, close it, and then relaunch the VM. You'll be greeted with this different screen, which is not the Apple logo, but the BIOS. Go to the EFI option, and then you'll see the screen. Once it says shell, go ahead and type FS0 colon. Then type VOL or volume to verify that it's the EFI partition. Then type the commands on screen. Once you get to this step, go to the top line where it says 41 and then change the 41 to a 63. This will correct the error from before that was ASR to CSR. Once you verify that it is correct, go ahead and click F3 to exit and then Y to save. Then follow the commands on screen.
Once you're done entering all the commands, click exit and then go back to Mac OS and then hit enter. You should see the Apple logo and it should boot up normally. Go ahead and log back in and then once you're at the desktop, go ahead and launch MacForge. Once you've launched MacForge, you'll be prompted to install a helper. This will allow us to get more control over our system and then access to the private API. Once you've entered your password and clicked install helper, go to the system tab. If you see only two of the three check marks enabled, then go ahead and close the app and close the menu bar icon. This ensures that the app has a full restart and will install a helper fully. Once you've relaunched, go back to the system tab and see if all three check marks are enabled. If they are, go ahead to the manage plugins tab. Now we need to go ahead and download the blue bubbles helper from GitHub. Go ahead and open Safari and go to the private API page once again. Once you're on this page, scroll down until you find the link for the Blue Bubbles helper. Then download the latest release. Make sure you download the one that's for your macOS version. Once it's downloaded, go back to MacForge and then drag the bundle onto the window. If you don't see the bundle showing up in the window properly, we can verify that it's been transferred by opening Finder. If you don't know how to get to library slash application support, go to preferences and then enable these things on the sidebar. Go to the sidebar tab and then enable your Mac location. This will allow us access to the entire hard drive. Then just follow the system path that's at the bottom of the page. Now we can see that the blue bubbles helper is in the plugins folder. Go ahead and close MacForge and Finder, but do not close the MacForge menu bar icon. Now we can go ahead and relaunch blue bubbles and we're good to go. Click next since we've already done all the steps and go to the private API page. Now on this page, we can see that we met the private API requirements. At the bottom, click the check mark to enable it and then reload until the connected says yes. Once it says yes, go ahead and click next and we are ready to go. I usually change the theme and I enable the incoming FaceTime detection. This doesn't allow you to attend the FaceTime call, but it will give you a notification if someone is calling. I recommend leaving startup with macOS and keep macOS awake disabled for virtual machines. If you're a real Mac, they work, but on virtual machines, they can cause issues. For update settings, I usually leave both on so that when an update is released, it'll automatically update. Then go ahead and click finish. And if you get to the screen and you see a URL and a QR code, we're good to go. We can go ahead and download the app on our phone. You can download the app from the Play Store or the GitHub, but the Play Store gets automatic updates and just follow the setup steps. For server connection, I usually just do scan with QR code. On the server, go ahead and click show QR code and then scan it. For sync options, I just put the slider all the way to one message per chat. Since if you click a chat and then scroll up, the messages will be automatically downloaded. This will allow for a quick transfer of all the messages. Now I'll show you how to set up 
private API within the app. In the settings of the Bluebubbles app, scroll down until you find private API features and then make sure you enable them. This will allow us to access all the features we took to set up on the server. I usually enable all these except subject lines. You can see the full list of features here. Another advantage of the Bluebubbles app over AirMessage is more customization. In the appearance settings, you can see all the theming options. If you have an Android 12 or above phone, you can use Android's Material U feature. You can even download the emoji font for iOS. Now I'll show you a demo of the private API features in action. Here you can see that reactions work from an Android phone and back and forth. Even typing indicators work. You can also do send reactions and send effects. And you can also do inline replies. You just need to swipe from the left and it will show a reply box. I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below.